Good evening. We have a beautiful video for you, and I'd like you to look at this and and see what's going on. I said earlier in another video, I said we're going to talk about some things, some things you're going to like to hear, and some things you're not going to like to hear. But the key to all this is they are good for you to know. That way you're going to know what's going to happen before it happens. So when these things occur, you're going to realize that, hey, the minister told you what you need to know, okay? Now, the title of this is The Great Gathering. 2022 to 2023, the great gathering. This is a time like no other time of, of human history. See, people talk about certain things. They talk about World War I, World War II, Vietnam War. They talk about uh, the recession, the depression, uh, the panic, the uh, depression, later the recession and all that. And these little things happen in a nation through time. And it happened and affect individual life through time. But right now, this is one of the most critical times in human history. And most people is not aware of that. It's one of the most critical times in human history. And you need to know that. It's very important to know that. And for the church, people don't realize that the church is going to have a, what they, some people call a mount, metamorphosis or whatever they would say like that. But the church is going to have a change that most people is not aware of. They don't see. And I want you to see this because a lot of people, when they seen the COVID come, and they seen right after the economy, after the economy were like it was, then they seen the COVID come, and then they, they took, okay, the, the event happened, and uh, you know, the virus kept us out of the church because no one wanted to get affected and da 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 and all that. But that was something a sign that the church and others need to see. Now, when I talk about the church, I, I don't just mean people go to building. I mean the people of God. Okay, the church, the people of God. Okay, and these and, and others who want to know truthism. But what you have to see is that you got to look look beyond the surface. And see what's underneath it all. What is God trying to tell me? What it's like, listen, I use for example, you ride in the car and you got a traffic ticket. God forbid anybody have to get a traffic ticket, but you got a traffic ticket, okay, and you're driving a certain speed, okay, and then you get another traffic ticket, okay? And then you say, Well, wait, wait there, what I'm doing wrong, what I, I'm doing. You have to pay attention. We have to pay attention. Now, I'm not saying all traffic tickets are about, but I'm saying that if this happened, you got to pay attention to your speed, you got to pay attention to whatever you got that ticket in, or what several different things, you got to pay attention. And what I'm saying to you right now, I need you to pay attention because this is a gathering, but you're not going to know it unless someone exposed it to you from seeing the scripture. You need to know where the scriptures show that there is going to be a gathering. See, people can get up and, and come up with fancy titles and they can say this and that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you my title is going to relate to the prophetic events that's going to happen in our time. I know something I said, I was looking at a video about five months ago. You could check that video out. And, I, and in that video, I had written on one of the boys this. I said that uh, America, the uh, Britain, the European Union is going to come in confrontation with the Soviet Union, China, and Iran. I said that. This before we even had anything to do with talking about a war in Ukraine. Now, most people then say, well, oh, okay, I missed that. But see, that's why I write certain things on the videos for you to go back, look at the date of the video, go back and see what I said, and you can see the prophecies come alive. And that's what you have to do. A lot of times I'm giving you prophecies and you don't realize that it's right in there. It's a statement that I've been made and that statement telling, giving your prophecy. Four months later, you had... Uh, 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 took me a month and so many weeks later you had the Soviet Union in Ukraine 
After that, you had China saying to America, you know, you need to, you know, leave this alone and, and do diplomatic uh, procedures, et cetera, et cetera. And then Biden said about two weeks ago that told Taiwan, notice this, told Taiwan that we got your back. You know, if anything happened, we got your back. Come on now, think about it now. Biden slipped and said that, then his administration tried to straighten it out, but Biden said what he meant. And we got to see that. Now, why is this important? Because China, one of its greatest goal, and one of the greatest goal of the leader of, of China right now is to bring Taiwan back into China. So if our country talking about not, you know, is, is, is taking Taiwan away from China, and Taiwan always been a part of China, now the, that Chinese goal, China goal is to bring it back in, and China is a very powerful nation right now. They are not, they are first in the economy, from what they say, they largest economy in the world right now. And you look at the amount of people there, man, it's an onslaught of people. You got 72% of the world population is over there in the Asiatic area, over there in Asia, 70%. Only, only about 20 some percent 27% or less is in the West. We don't want to start nothing with China. And we got to look at these things. And I prophesize it right on now. It's on there. You can go look at the video. It's dealing with the events. You can go look at the video. See, and this is what we got to have. We got to see things before it happens. And that's why I ask you, study the videos. Now we're going to get on into this. Okay, the great, the great gathering. 2022, uh, 2043. We're going to start with Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel, Ezekiel was talking to the pastors, talking to the uh, uh, the shepherds of the church, or the shepherd of God's people. See, in that time when you're looking at it, shepherd did not mean just a, 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 a preacher. Because you can look at the British way of parliament and the way they got their procedure. It's a minister of of agriculture, minister of finance, or minister of that. That minister name, that's just as much as a preacher in a, in a sense, and people don't know that. He's a minister, okay? So when you're dealing with this, don't just think in the church sense because you are dealing with the five divine laws, social, economic, political, uh, moral, and diet and appetite. That, uh, that's the way the Doctrine, the manifest destiny come from, and that's where the doctrine of discovery come from. And you need to know that. Now, what is so important about this? Now, what is so important about this? You need to see this. It's very important. Ezekiel, we're going to read Ezekiel 34, 30. Thus shall they know thought. Now, he said, thus say, shall they know thought. So this is going to be at a certain time of human history. It will be a time when thought is introduced to the mass of the church and the mass of God's people. Thus shall they know thought. I, the Lord, their God, am with them. I, the Lord, their God is with them. I want you to hear this part by God is with them. I want you to hear this because you're going to hear that echo in a prophecy that's dealing with Ishmael and Emmanuel at the time of Hagar in Genesis 16. You want to see that. And at the time of Sarah, you need to see that. It's very important. Okay? Now, thus, thus shall they know thought. I am the Lord, their God. I am with them. And thought they even the house of Israel are my people, said the Lord God. Now we know thought as Machedit. He's also known as Hermes in the time of the Renaissance. Now thought is showing you what the word God means so you'll know. Because some people sometimes they use that word God and don't understand the interchangeable part of God. God means a netta. The Greeks did not have a word for netta, so they compared their word God with a netta. Okay, now we know we got the Almighty God, the angelic name of God is Allah, and then we got the Lord God thought, and we have to understand that. He is known that if you study uh, Egyptian mythology, he's known as the God of the gods, okay, and we'll know that. 
And, and the God of writing, the God of magic, the God of, oh, if you name anything you can name, you got to put thought name on it. That's how he got to be the God of the gods. And you have to understand that. And in the story of Melchizedek, understanding Melchizedek, he's known as the priest of the most high God. Okay. That Abraham paid his tithes to. Okay. And he blessed Abraham in many ways. Now, we say this now. Thought. They, even the house of Israel, even the house of Israel. Now, when you look at the house of Israel, and we don't told you who Israel is and how you understand Israel, you're not looking at an Israel uh, way over in the Middle East that they just put together. You're not looking at that. You're looking at this book was sent to America. So you're looking at the Israel that is, is coming into play in the United States of America. Israel, Israel is a cold name. So you need to understand this book. Please understand this book more because it's very important to really understand this book. This book, when King James signed off on it, it was only sent to places of America, sent to America, and some people say it's sent to Bimini. I got to check that out and see how valid that is. But this book was sent to the United States of America. When you go from Genesis to Revelation and you study the esoteric writing, the allegorical writing, it is about America. When you read the story of Joseph, it is about America. In this book, a story of Joseph fit the history of America. When you look at it, the first chapter of Assyria and America in this book fit history. America is repeating the history of Assyria. And Jesus, of the, of the initiate, said that Jesus is the one that gave that prophecy about Jonah being like the son of Jonah time, being like the son of man. So you got to compare the time of Jonah, the nation Jonah, Jonah came in Assyria and the city of Nineveh with a nation in America and it'll be 100% accurate, my people. It is 100% accurate. And you need to see that. It's very, very important. I want to tune you into what's happening now. I want you to see the broader picture. You need to see the broader picture because I know that many individuals have been going to churches and been having discussions on the Bible and discussions on different things about the Bible and they have not known the truthism. They have not known the truthism. What is known as the fullness of the gospel. Now is a time that that has to come about. Ezekiel 34, 13. And I will bring them out from the people. I will bring them out from the people. So you hear God is talking about a gathering. The initiative is telling you about God is going to have a gathering. He's going to bring that people, those peoples out from the, from, uh, going to bring that group of people, the house of Israel, out from those people. Now notice what he say very carefully because you're going to see this Bible talk about America and it's fulfilling itself. And it say, and gather them from the, now notice this word here. You're dealing with an allogram. See, you've got to know the arts. The arts is crucially important, very important. You see this word, you'll see, and they'll have the R in there. It'll be, you'll see it as uh, countries. But the initiates put it that way only for another initiate to reveal it to you. You've got to understand the arts. It's very important. You take that R away from them, and you've got counties. America is made up of counties. And this is what it's talking about. It ain't talking about no countries because the Bible was not sent to all countries all over the world. It was sent to the United States of America, King James province. And you have to understand it's crucial. It's very important to see that. From all counties, America got counted. And them from all from the counties and will bring them to their own land. Now, what is he talking about? If he's moving you from the counties, that means he's bringing you to a particular place in the United States. Now, is that similar to the time of, uh, of Moses and Joshua the time? Yes. When they brought the peoples out of Egypt, as they say, out of Egypt into Canaan, Canaan was a province of Egypt. Canaan was part of Egypt. And people don't know that. They don't study to see what's really going on. So if God is going to bring you down to uh, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, areas of Louisiana, the areas of Louisiana, Mississippi, on the, on the east side of the Mississippi River, which was a Hebrew nation and during the time of the 18, before the 1830s, and if he's going to bring you down there, 
then you should know that this is the land that he's talking about. And I will bring them to their own land. And in many of the prophecies of the Old Testament, they show the location of it. They show location of it. You study some of my other videos, you'll see I show you the location, how the Bible shows the location of this particular area. And when you begin to study the location of the area and you go back at, at Andrew Johnson time, pushing those uh, uh, black Native Americans and the Indians off that coastal land, you'll find out that at that time in 18, in the 1823 round there, they found gold in Georgia and they wanted that. That was the first gold rush that was found in the United States. In that area where the Cherokee, Hebrew Cherokee and black Africans live. Now most people that say, well, Oh, I don't know about no black African living there way before Columbus or way before this and that. Study. Study William Penn. Letters. What he wrote over to Europe, to the friends. His people called the friends, which later in America they were called the Quakers. Study this stuff. Study about uh, uh, Columbus diary, where Columbus seen them over here, uh, 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 black Africans over here trading with the natives and others with West African coins. See, our history books, our academic world don't want you to know these truths from our people. Study it. Prove me wrong. See, that's the idea. When you know what you done did, you done did your homework, you done study it, then you ask your audience, prove me wrong. And why do I ask you to prove me wrong? Because when you go and you check me and you find it, and you see that, darn man, African people with the nappy hair, the thick lip, the dark skin, and the white nose, they was here. Then you know that somebody been lying to me. Then we know that all them Africans that they claim came from Africa over here during the transatlantic slave trade. No, 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 no. You already had them here. But they don't want you to know. But what would be the reason why they wouldn't want you to know? Because they don't want you to know they done took your land and you wanted to stay and did not want to go with the Trail of Tears. You blacks that did not want to go because it was your land and you wanted to stay there. You let them take most of your land and you stood to those certain areas. That's why when you look around and notice that some black folks if you go to grandmama and great grandmama in a certain area had 500 uh, acres of land uh, a thousand acres of land still. You wonder, well, where they got their land from? Because this is not the area that uh, 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 the Sherman papers say that they should move to. So where they got their land from? See, these things have to be answered. And most people, they don't, they are not inquisitive minded to go and, and check stuff out. But you got to be, because there's some hidden truths there that they never wanted you to know and they covered it up so you wouldn't know. So when you go and talk about reparation, you're talking about nickels and dimes. Give me $50,000. Give me $100,000 and that. That's chunk change to what you're supposed to have. Your land is valuable. All those states that belong to you, if you had those states and that tax money come, revenue come in there in those states, do you know how much you have and your children have from generation to generation? That's where your wealth at. That's why God keeps telling about the land. God ain't telling you about no money. He's telling you about the land. The land is your wealth. And you need to claim your land, my people. So if you want to talk about restoration and reparation, you talk about the land. They don't want you to talk about that. And that's what you should be talking about. I'm not interested in no talk change. And people may say, well, $100,000 is a lot of money. Not really, because you've got grandkids coming about. Your great granddaddy and me, great 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 granddaddy and great 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 grandmama owned the land. So if they owned the land and God trying to get a restoration, He trying to restore us back where we're supposed to be, we want our land. That's why you got, you're going to have a great gathering. Before He gathered, He got to get rid of some of your leaders, some of your preachers and other people off the scene. He got to bring the true knowledge in so y'all could, you could learn the truth. And so you're going to end up walking away from this thought. That's what God said in 34. You need to read the whole chapter, my people. Read that chapter. Read and study that chapter. 
And you will see God is going to do something to the church that you've never seen before. I told you some of this stuff is going to be good and some of it ain't going to be not so good. Sometimes the storm got to come before the calm. So when the storm comes, boom, it got to happen. Then it's going to get calm and it's going to play its way out. And that happened in many, many times I've seen that when hurricanes had came. But things got better for the people. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is to pay attention to what God is saying. Because he's saying here in Ezekiel 34, 13, and I will bring them out from the people. Why you got to bring you out from the people? Because everybody running your communities now. Everybody dictating you. They done too. Some people's in charge trying to make them above black folks. The world of Spanish, uh, 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 no, they don't use the term Spanish. They use this term. Oh, it's a name they use uh, uh, for for Puerto Ricans and all people. Latinos. The, the Latinos. No, it's another name they use. They use this name for all of them. They put them all in Asian. One. But no, we we ain't got no word about it. <laughs> and uh, I I'll pop it up. I'll come up. But they put them all in this one bunch, and they could come from Marvel, uh, from Central America. They assist. Well, I think Latinos will be. The, oh, they come from Asia. They yeah, are. Latinos will be more of it. But they bring them from different. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against where these people come from. I'm not. They ain't there, you know. They won't call them Mexican. They won't call them uh, Guatemalans. They'll, call, they'll put them in one bunch. And now these people come from different areas. And then they'll say, well, oh, these people, this, this group of people, Latinos, is the largest. They're larger than the black population now. They're larger than this, and they're larger than that. They're trying to take credibility. And it ain't them doing it. It's just the system trying to take credibility from the blacks so the blacks won't be a, a Native American or people of color won't be asking for certain things they need to ask for in the political arena. And we have to see that. And it's not taken from the Latinos. It's not taken from them at all. What it's trying to say is that this, this system, this nation have been so biased to black people because of the color of their skin that it's, 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 it's unbelievable. And these things should happen. But what we're going with, this is not a, a thing about black and white here. This is a thing about God's will and what God is trying to do in America at this time of human history. And we give you from from 2020, and we know 2020 is now, all the way to 2043, before it comes to its total end. Now, we need to know that. Now, what I'm gonna show you is that, let's get back into this, very important, I don't wanna get too far off. And I will bring them out from the people, because we all kind of people, You, we, we got what they call integration, and integration got you everywhere. Everybody mixed all together, da da da. And black folks, you know, never be able to get yourself together because you're not united. You don't. Some of you don't even classify yourself as part of a, a certain communities. You say, "Well, I don't live there. I live here. I live there." But you're black. You're black people. Oh, you are colored. You are people of color. And you got to come to that. You got to fess up to that. You are the house of Israel along with others. So you are the majority of the house of Israel. So you got to be who you are. You got to fit with the scripture. You cannot run away from being who you are in the whole frame of what God got going on. And you need to know that. Now, I'm going to say this now. Bring you from, from the people and gather, and gather them from the counties and will bring them to their own land. That means that in that period of time from uh, 2022 to 2043, that means in this area, you must have a land, okay? That's the great gathering. You must have a land. And if I don't, if you don't have a land, a land I don't know what I'm talking about, my people. That's why I love it, because I know. Everything God done showed me, everything thought done showed me, everything, you know, he done showed me, so far, it's been there. It's in the scripture. I do not deviate from the scripture of truth. I do not deviate from it. And I know who he's talking about. And I know where this Bible was sung. And who these peoples are. And what this Bible is all about. See, they tell you and they try to get you to think it's the world. you got certain groups, and I don't want to call their name. They tell you, well, yeah, read on the Bible. And they have one talking. And the other reading the Bible. And the different one. I read, da, 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 da. God going to take you and govern you from all nations of the world. That's a lie. That Bible's in code. So I don't want to, you know, 
make them look bad. That's why I ain't calling no name. But this thing is about counties. It is not about countries. And it's just, it's ridiculous that people say that, and that's why God has to get rid of some of the ministers of all denominations. He got to shut the thing down so you could begin to open your eyes because the word of God said, I'm going to pull you away from that. I'm going to pull you away from that. And people don't want to hear that because they feel like, man, I put all this interest, all this time in this church to help build that church. But the audacity of that brother saying stuff like that, what are he saying that for? People, I'm just telling you what the word of God is saying. I'm a prophet of God. I'm a general prophet of God. And I'm telling you what the word of God is saying. Now, whether you want to heed to it or not, you don't have to. But I tell you what, if you get in God's way, not my way, I, I ain't the one doing it. But if you get in God's way, God is going to move you. And he can move you in a way you don't want to be moved. So we need to start knowing what this book is saying and follow suit to what God is saying and take your feelings and your emotions out of it and put your common sense in it so you can see the word of God because God is talking to the masses of the people. See, because a lot of you guys, y'all didn't know about uh, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, a lot of y'all didn't know about uh, 6, 2006, 7, and 8. See, you ain't know about these things. And see, it was written in the book. See, that's the whole thing. See, I'm not dealing with something that I'm not aware of, don't know about. I'm doing the same thing, telling a revelation after revelation over and over again. So I got a track record. This book was written in 2006. This book tell you what happened all the way to from 2000 to 2020. And it been 100% accurate. So I got a track record. This book tell you that you're going to have a black president before two years, so many months before he came. I got a track record. My other book tell you that the, uh, uh, the, the uh, president after Barack Obama was going to come out of the state of Florida, not be born from the state of Florida, but come out of the state of Florida. I got a track record. This book told you that 2017 is going to have massive natural disasters. I got a track record. I got a track record, my people. So I'm not here just talking. See, the reason you haven't heard about me, the mass of the people haven't heard about me, because the governmental system did not want you to. Okay? So they did their thing by shutting it down to the point where you don't have so many people listen to you. But they can't hold God. See, you might do certain things, but you can hold God because when you thought you was holding God's messenger, God already had it in the equation to pull him back and just hold him still. Just hold him still until a certain time. This is the time, people. 2022, they have to give up. You can't twist a rubber band for so long before it, it breaks or it winds that thing out. And you got to understand it. Let's go with it. Let's go with it now. Now, it say, to their own land and feed them, going to feed them. Now, when you understand what he say by feed them, it's talk, because he don't talk about the mountains, it's talking about spiritually, okay? You're going to move to their own land and going to feed them and feed them upon the mountains. What is the mountains? The holy places. That means you're going to get revelation from on high. You're going to know what's going on. You're going to know what you need to do before you need to do it. You're going to know exactly what's going on. Okay? The, oh, they say the mountains uh, uh, of Israel. That means that God has sent you a messenger. Israel. He has sent you Israel. And Israel is a code name for your messenger. So on the mountains of Israel mean on the doctrine and knowledge of, of Lewis. The knowledge of your messenger. That's what he's saying there. And you need to know that. That's why I'm here. I'm here because God have me here, not man. I didn't come under those different denominations and that. Okay, God got me here for you. It's a particular work. Okay, now, by the river, and I say by the river and in all inhabited places of the country. That means God's going to get you a country. Why I say by the river? By the rivers. Because of this. Because if you look from the Mississippi River to the Atlantic Ocean, 
down to the Gulf of Mexico, where they have, similar to the Euphrates, cross over to the inland sea, which is, uh, uh, this is all scripture, uh, uh, is, is uh, the Lake Okeechobee, to the Atlantic, that area there is the area that God has sought forth for you to have your nation. That is also the area that is known as, in time past as the Hebrew Cherokee Nation. Okay, and on this Cherokee Nation, what just Cherokee Indians lived there? You had Creeks, etc. You had Africans from uh, from Africa living there. This was before the slave trade. Now, this was before the European came here. And you need to study this stuff. They kicked one guy out of Harvard because one of the scholars, and you know Harvard has some of the best scholars there is. You know, you, and I ain't trying to take away from the other university, but Harvard is known to have a great scholars. This one scholar wrote a book showing you about the Africans' flight in America way before the transatlantic slave trade. And he stated in his book, we don't know who was first, the Africans or the Indians, because the Indians have taken on have take have taken on the African culture. And also you have one of the archaeologists in uh, Central and South America have found some findings of Africans artifacts that dated back, I mean, uh over five hundred years before what we call Christ, BC. Okay? And you need to see this. See, they're not bringing this in your academic world. This is not being discussed in your school system. See, they want to erase your history. They don't want you to know these truthisms. And this is what's happening. So when you get a preacher teaching you something, he's going to literally teach you the word because that's what he has taught all his preachers to teach, the literal word. They never taught you the esoteric part of the Bible. And 30 years ago, they told you the Bible is in cold. A long to went on right there. But did the church decide that they're going to go and try to decode it and know what decode was all about? You had some Jewish guys came there. Well, I don't even classify them Jewish scholars. They came and said, well, we could take the computer and we could put this in. We could pull that out. Crap. The Bible strictly say, Thou art is the glory of thy strength. It also say, Thou art, it's a user term, Thou art mean is greatly beloved. Many places are got in the Bible to lead you to the arts. But did any of them or any of our, our doctors or any of our, 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 our professors? In our black university, church universities, and all that, did they try to find out these truths? No, they stayed with the status quo. They stayed with what the Eurocentric wanted to be taught, and we got to see that. Now you got a renaissance. Now you got a new time. What you call a paradigm shift. Now you need to know the truth. See, they don't even teach you what the Renaissance taught. The Renaissance taught the Hermetic Principles, and nobody wanted to talk about that. What was the Hermetic Principle about? The Thought Principles. But they don't want you to know that. And they wrote in your Bible, Thought, but then they ain't going to tell you that. No, they'll put it in the sacred order, but they're not going to tell you that. So you got the masses of the people running, and they reading the uh, scriptures saying, uh, it say this, uh, uh, I am that I am. And they actually think it's that. They got that in capital letters. They actually think it's that. The word that, I am that I, that don't even make sense. And the book was written in the 1600s now. It was written in around 1611 at the time when the Renaissance was studying the Hermetic Principles. So if they were studying the Hermetic Principles, of course they're going to put who Hermes is in the Egyptian literature, his thoughts. And you got to see that. Let me move on. We're going to cover this a little further. Okay? Okay. Now, in Ezekiel, I'm going to go, oh, okay, yeah. In Ezekiel 34, 2, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Okay? Now, why would he say the shepherds of Israel? Because most black folks and most peoples in the church feel like they come into Christianity, they connected to Israel. Okay? And you need to see that. So what he's talking about is he's talking about the Israel. Now, also, there's a twofold prophecy in that. Okay? Now, it's, they are in the area where Israel is living. The true Israel, the man that have came to the planet to walk in that Israel person. So, it going to use that, the shepherds of Israel. In other words, they are peoples that in the dark age, 
are teaching the philosophy of God, peoples being God's people, in a sense. And they, they, that's what they do. That's what your preachers do, tell you. But they teach you the Jesus part. They don't talk about Israel. They talk about Jesus. And they take Jesus to be Israel. Now, is Jesus Israel? Yes, in the code way of seeing that he's Israel. But the literal way that they see somebody that came 2,000 years ago and died on the cross and all this, oh, no. God forbid that. In the Old Testament, God will never have a human sacrifice. So all of a sudden, when the Gentiles get it, the Romans get it, they're, there you go with a human sacrifice. Never before you ever heard of a human sacrifice until the Romans came into the picture and brought Paul into the picture. Come on, my people. Come on, come on. And see, this is the whole big game that's being played on you, and you done failed for it because you didn't go back and study. You didn't go back and know what you need to go do and know the truth. Now, God, God let it be. He let it be now. I ain't going to say it. He let it be because it was a dark age, but it's not acceptable now. And they're going to keep preaching that, and this is why God going to get rid of them. Because you're trying to preach against God against the universal order. We are to go into peace. Everything in Christianity, ever since Christian, not Christianity, Christendom, ever since Christendom been on the face of the earth, you have had wars. Wars. One war after the other war after the other war. There have never been peace under Christendom. Now you got to understand the difference between Christendom and Christianity. Christianity go all the way back to ancient Egypt. Christendom started at Ptolemy time coming this way in Rome, okay, and coming forward. And you got to always understand that. Don't get it messed, mixed up and don't get it twisted. You need to know the difference between, between Christianity and Christendom. It's a different. Now, Ezekiel 34, 2, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, do feed themselves. It's all about their vision, their dream. Building their church, their cathedral, their this, their that. It ain't about God, it ain't about God people, because we're supposed to be obeying the five divine laws. We're supposed to be just concerned about their economics as we do their morality. We must be concerned about their political structure as we do the moral structure. Okay? We must be concerned about the communities and, and, and the place where they live and all the other things above with the family and stuff, just like we do their moral. But the church is all about your moral, you getting up, going to heaven, when the Bible says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. See, I don't want no, I, I gonna, I'm going to get that anyway up there. I don't need a preacher to help get me there. If I live a good life, God going to get me there. I'm going to be there anyway. So I want God being, we are God beings to come to the earth to have a human experience. So I don't need no preacher to get me to God. But I do need a prophet to reveal the revealed word, that word of, of God, so I can understand what God is saying, who I am, what I need to know. But when they're telling you, oh, if you come to church, you get saved, you're going to make it into heaven, and when somebody have a funeral and they, they classify them as not saved, oh, they're going to hell. Get up out of here. That's the devil. And it was okay in the dark age, but that's not now. That's not now. You are not to tell a person whether or not they got, you got no place to put them. How are you going to tell a person? Well, I believe that he went to hell. And the Catholic made the term hell up. And you saying hell. But you don't even know where the term come from. Come on now. Let's get it right now. Let's get it right. Don't condemn somebody. Don't judge a person when you don't know the person. And you assume who they are. It's not fair. Okay. Let's deal with it. Okay. Woe be unto the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd... Feed the flock? Should not you build programs that, that keep these black kids out of the system, out of jail and stuff, and done took their life and destroyed their life because one strike or three strikes you out? Or uh, 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 the business is saying, well, I can't hire you because I see you got a, a minor, you know, felony, a minor uh, uh, this and that, and I don't think you could be 
The person for the job, although you don't got to be holier than thou, and you trying to do all you can, and you in the church trying to do what you're supposed to do, or you living a life trying to do what's right, and this system telling you, judging your people, and you sitting back letting them do it, and telling me you a man of God or a woman of God, get the heck up out of here with that nonsense. And you ain't pushing the five divine laws of God? Come on. Everybody don't want to hear that no more. No people ain't going to hear that. These young people come on now. They don't want to hear that crap. But yet you still think, you your shirt and your towel. <clears throat> I'm Dr. So-and-so. Who are you talking to? You know, I'm Reverend So-and-so. That Negro got the audacity to say this about us. Who is that Negro? I'm God's man. Prove me wrong. I'm in the book. Prove me wrong. I got a right to say what I say because this is my hour, this is my time, and I'm here to do my job. Now prove me wrong. Since you so much into God, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. And that's what it's all about now. See, people don't want to, when you God done gave you a calling, they want to just, you know, be. I'm sorry, so and so. You got your belief. I got my belief. Oh, so I got a right to that. Yeah, you got a right, but is it right? You got a right for a lot of things, but is it right? And you got to see that. Let's go and move on now. Let's move on. Because they're not feeding the flock. Because our young people's catching hell out there. And not only the ones incarcerated, you ain't got to be incarcerated. We got people out there. They're trying to pay their life bills, trying to pay their, their uh, mortgage and etc. And they're trying to get the job that, that's available for them because there's a system that cut them down. And then you got some ain't never been in any kind of trouble, but they can't get the money from the bank. They can't get this to do that. They can't get this to do that. And they got the capability of doing a lot. But then you ain't trying to help pay the road for them of demanding the banks to give them this and give them that so they could grow and help other people with jobs and help other people out. You ain't doing nothing but collecting money and tell them you need to pay your tithes, you need to pay your offering, you riding in your cat like or your bins or this and that, and your family is taken care of, but I'd be damned if you're going to treat them like that. God is not going to have it. It ain't going to be no more, my peoples, and you will see. See, if I'm who I am, and I'm telling you, 2022 to 2043, all this is going to change. Time is going to be the judge. Time is going to tell the truth to this. And you need to see it. I ain't, ain't no shame in here. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to tell the truth. God's people got to come out of this condition now. And you shepherds who's standing in the gap, keeping them from being who they are, and some of you are boule, gatekeeping Illuminati Negroes, you got to go. Simple as that. I ain't going to touch you. I ain't got nothing to do with it. God's going to do this because he said it in his word. It ain't what me. No. And if I was stupid enough to get on that other side where y'all at with that nonsense, he'd take my behind out too. This ain't about person, individual. It's about God's will and his word. His word is going to do this one, my people. His word is going to do that. And he done built it in the possession of the eagle. Now, certain things got to happen at certain times in human history, people. And if you know the odds, you'll know the timing. And you'll know what's going on. Let's deal with it. But ye feed not the flock. Neither have ye sought thought, which was lost. Now, why was thought lost? Because when the Bible's written, the Eurocentric man put the dramatic principle here. They put the knowledge of thought here. But when you read the Bible, you didn't find out the thought was there. You just literally read it. Thought is right in your face, but you didn't want to see what you could find. You just literally, he said, well, you read this and see that like that and see that. And you just kept on going. And you say, well, the Holy Spirit, then yes, the Holy Spirit, then but the Holy Spirit, if you're going to breathe the Holy Spirit and see something and you're going to refuse to accept it, the Holy Spirit's not going to force it on you. Okay? He's not going to force it on you. You got to accept what the Holy Spirit show you. It's there. I'm showing it's there. Prove me wrong. In my videos, I show you thought all over the place. Prove me wrong. I show you thought. The show in Isaiah 
the 34th or something, 34, 43, somewhere like that, that thought say, I am the Savior. He is the Savior. Okay? It said that Jesus took the priesthood out for him. Machazi. Who is Machazi? He took the priesthood out. So he took the priesthood out. And well, who you think should be the Savior? Jesus? Yo, Jesus? Or, or Machazi? Come on. Come on now. Let's be real. And see this thing like we supposed to see it. But ye feed not the flock. Okay? Neither have you sought fault, which was lost. Why was lost? Because the Eurocentric man hid it. He hid him in there and didn't want you to see him. And you didn't seek to find him. You found what he told you. And Jesus was a code name to the messenger. Jesus is a code name to the word Louis. But you didn't know, you weren't gonna try to find that. You just went by what he said. And he just told you, believe. And you went there falling, oh, I believe. Get out of here. Okay? Now, neither have you saw thought which was lost. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. What is the shepherd is all about? This shepherd here is more than just a preacher. A preacher is like Martin Luther King, okay? Martin Luther King, when he came, he tried his best to shepherd our people. But at the end, he told you it was dope. I led my peoples in a burning fire, a burning house, because of the fact that he had the government helping him People like the Kennedys helping him to make decisions. And sometimes when other people make decisions and God trying to make decisions for you, it's difficult, okay, to do exactly what God wants. Because sometimes the government can make it a little easy when it ain't really supposed to be that easy on that particular task. And so he got caught up in it. And at the end of it, he said what he said. He realized that setting people at a lunch counter didn't, wasn't worth a heck of me. You know, sitting at the lunch counter wasn't about nothing. See, they wasn't sharing any cost of government, nothing to set you at the lunch counter. But to give you that money that you need to build your business, to give you that opportunity you need to strive without intervening, to give you this and to give you that so you could be the people you need to be, they refused to do that. And they used uh, Martin Luther King's own posse to get rid of it. Some of them in his own posse was a part of his demise. Okay? And you got to see what's going on, people, and know that. That's what you're dealing with. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd. Since uh, we done had another Jubilee came in 17 and 18, ever since uh, 2000, I mean, ever since 1968, we had no shepherd to lead us to that promised land that God talked about. Okay? Because we was actually in the dark age time. And God just let it be. But he's telling you now. The David have to be here. David is coming. David is here. David is the same as Israel. Okay. David is the same as the coming of the Jesus chapter. It's the same person. And you need to know that. You need to know the ox so you can see it. And they became, they became meat to all the beasts. To all the nations of the field. See, people feed off you. The money that's supposed to be going into your, your banks or go for you to do programs to help you out, they send them to Ukraine. They send them to parts of Russia, Europe, uh, Israel, everywhere else. Now, you paying taxes. They are on your land, but they're not helping you like they're supposed to, okay? They're not doing things for you like they should. And you got to see this, okay? You got to see this. And they became meat to all the beasts, being nations of the field, field represented the world, okay, when they were scattered, okay? That means you don't have a nation now, and God wants you to have a nation, and you got to see this. Let's go on to this next board. Prophes prophecy now, okay? Prophecy now, okay? Ezekiel 34, 10. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. That means your spiritual, political, and other areas, economic, social, diet and appetite. God is against that. Your leadership. 
That's what he's talking about. Your leadership in every area, in all of those five areas, God is against it. Because they can't come together and see what God really is trying to do. God is trying to get you to be established as a nation of peoples, and they still want you to be a part of integration, okay, into his world, not into your own world, your own nation. It's nothing wrong with integration when they're integrating and you own the land, and they come into their paying taxes and, and being loyal to your land or your nation, but you into their environment, and that's why you're catching hell. Because they done claimed your land and made it theirs. Okay? So that's why you're dealing with it. Okay? Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. Now, I didn't say this. I did not write this. This was written before I was born. God is saying that through the initiative. I am against them. But see, against them, you got to see the time. As we read down, they're going to show you the time that it's saying this. See, you have had preachers for the longest. Man, even you had preachers in the field when they were picking the cotton and propping the tobacco. You had ministers in there and sisters singing the choir song out there in the field. Preachers and saying they little hymns and oh, as they were and stuff like that. So you've been having that for a long time, my people. Then you have them in the church building. With the youth center man sitting in the back row, making sure they ain't say nothing contrary to what the way that Christians, Christianity, a Christian wanted you to know the book. Okay? So you don't have that. Then you have them come up and they went to different colleges, Morehouse colleges. They went to different other colleges, around, all colleges that had the, the Christian program, Thune Cooper College and all the other ones, and then the major college, Howard. And, uh, and Yale and all them. See, they didn't have white Christians uh, uh, professor, religious professors in it too. So you go to any college, any university, and you're going to get that Jesus stuff or that Christian stuff. Like a lot of professors don't want you to be talking about no Jesus because they want to teach you philosophy or religion. So they want to teach you all the stuff and not just one thing. But you had that there. You had that leadership of that there. Okay? And you need to see that. Now, thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. That means there'll come a great gathering. That means there's going to be a great religious movement, a great spiritual movement, a great economic movement, a great social movement, because God is in involved with this now. God is going to be with man. And you need to see this. Okay? Then, to cease from feeding the flock, neither shall the shepherd feed themselves anymore. In other words, God is not going to let them ones that have been there to utilize the, the benefit that the church and the benefit of the mass of the peoples have, have, have given to them. You know, the, these, uh, these social leaders or these uh, peoples who uh, look at themselves like they're going to be like the Shopton type people. You know, they're still utilizing the peoples to furnish their program, the Jesse type people. They still using the people to furnish their program, you know, Rainbow Coalition, all this. I, I have to bring them out because that's giving a good example. Okay? So they're not just inside the pulpit, but they still preachers. They still ministers, you know, and etc. And see, God is going to put an end to all that stuff because he don't want it no more. He don't want it no more. We are in this paradigm shift. We finna go from the age of deception, the age of Pisces, into the age of Aquarius, a peacetime. So all this stuff that's keeping the people from getting where they need to get to, God's finna put it into. Because in the universal order, in the procession of the equinox, as we reach this area here, then the whole universe. See, this earth is a living organism. People don't know it. They think, yeah, the earth is the earth. You know, just a rock. There's nothing. When you study and get into the higher science and the higher knowledge, everything vibrates. Everything has its motion. Everything has its frequency. And people just don't, don't understand this. See, the Bible deals with a higher science. When they say Jesus walked the water, it don't mean that 
that just Jesus walked the water. Anybody who had that knowledge could walk the water. When they say that Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, they're trying to tell you it ain't just Jesus. It wasn't really about that. It's, it's a mythology in there. But it, anybody with that knowledge. See, when you had the Egyptian mystery system, you had the thought knowledge, and you knew thought, and you were getting knowledge from the castle records, you could do all that stuff. That's nothing new. I've heard of stories where my grandmama talk, told me that different, and other people told me my grandmama was one of them real type prophetic ladies. When she says something, it's going to happen. And other time, there were people, they had these awakes where they lay them down for so many days. They lay them down in the house on the porch, on the slab. And they have seen the preachers come in there and pray. Some of them brothers come up, wake up, hold their head up. People around them start, some of them start running. Not the preachers, because the preachers know what they're doing. And they had that gift, ability to do that. So it ain't nothing new. It ain't nothing just in Jesus' time. And people don't understand this. They think, well, oh, you know. No, no. It's in humanity. What's inside you? That spirit that God has put inside you have the ability to be to do so many wonderful things. But our system haven't given our people the opportunity. Because back then, if they found out you raised somebody from the dead, they're gonna look at you as a witch or a warlock or all this other stuff when all you is a, a clean cut Christian is trying to fast and pray and do God's will. But they'll put a title to you, okay? And they couldn't do that. They had to do it mostly under cover. Just like in Jesus' time, he told them, don't go and say this or keep it to yourself, okay? And you got to see that. People don't know that. Let's deal with this part right here, okay? I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may, may not be meat for them. In other words, that stuff that you're teaching, or they teaching, God ain't going to get there with it no more. That junk got to go. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places whether they have been scattered. Now notice this here. Whether they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Now I want you to see this. This would have been better written dark and then cloud, because then you understand it more. Now, what is he saying? This is the initiate using the arts. Now, what is he saying? Let's do dog day first. Dog day is here. This is the dog age. This is the dog age, then you go into the uh, iron age, the dark age, you got the uh, bronze age, you got the silver age, and you got the gold age. We are coming out right now. Uh, Pisces is part of the dark age. And that's what he's saying when he say dog day, dog day. Now, you are coming out of Pisces and you're coming into a time period that certain things is required. And it say cloudy. What cloudy mean? And this is the key here. See, many people that read right across there and they think it's like a cloudy day out there. No, 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 no. What do the clouds mean? What do, when do you have heard the clouds being caught up in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air? See, it's there, but you don't know that unless somebody know we are to tell you. This is the time right here that we're in right now, the cloudy time. And what is the clouds all about? The cloud. See, the initiates looked into the future, and they seen cloud technology. They knew the castle records were going to be open at a certain time. So they say cloudy because the castle records of the cloud, the cloud technology is, is more than just your computer, more than just your cell phone, more than just your television set, okay? And it's many things of communication that this, this knowledge is going through the clouds and reaching your living room and going through the cloud and reaching this and that. And then it say cloudy and dark day. That means right here at this cuss, right here at this time here, they say that's what's going to happen. And that's why you see that. Now let's move on because I want to end this here. Okay. And this is what you will know in the possession of the equal night. You are in that time. This is talking about your time now. The cloudy and the dog day is right here. It's talking about your time. I got five more minutes now. I got to get on out of here. <laughs> uh, Minister Dorothy says time to shed it on down. Now. Okay. But I want you to see this now. 
Now, I want you to see something. Because it deal with, in 3430, it talk about God with them. Okay, 3430 talks about God with them. I want you to see that. 3430, okay. Okay, God with them. Okay, God am with them. God with them. You see, God with them. Okay, now, so if God with them, this fulfilling a prophecy. That's talking about Ishmael and Emmanuel. And most people, they're not, they're looking at it, oh, wait a minute. This is what it says. God, what it, uh, Ishmael is, God will, God will hear. What is Emmanuel? God with us. Now, what does this mean in an esoteric way? What is it telling you about? Is it the time when the messenger is to come with the odds? You hear it when you say, hey, God, thy son with art. I'm bringing you the arts, my people. We have to use the arts to understand what God is saying. God will hear. God with us. What is the difference between God will hear and God with us? God is there. God is present. In the life of these people, in the life of this person, this son coming with art, this son that has to deliver God's will, this is the time. That's why the gathering of 2022 to 2024 is now. This is a revelation I'm giving you, my people. This is something you need to know. That way you'll know what's going to happen when the churches start shutting down. You'll know when, what's going to happen when you see scandals of the preachers and scandals of what you call the shepherd. That's what's going to happen when you see people's walking away because they see that that's crap. And they know that that's not what that means. And that this ain't working. This is the time. And you need to know that. What is the Emmanuel, Ishmael is all about? Look at the word Ishmael. L E, the M turning upside down, W I S. L E W I S. Lewis, the code name. The same name that is the sub name to the word Jew. The same name that they used when they was raising all these French kings to be the Messiah, and they were known as Louis. This is the time for that. Not back then. This is the time. Emmanuel. God with us. Look at the word Emmanuel. L-E. You see L-E. You got the W here. Take the W because the M make the W and the M make the S. W. You got the W. You got the I. Move the I there. And the other M make the S. L-E-W-I-S. And you're going to find this here. God with them in Ezekiel 34, 30. At the time when these these shepherds, I mean, at the time when these, these uh, shepherds and these individuals is going to be moved by God at that time. Because God, these shepherds going to be moved by God. And we got to see that, my people. This is a revelation. I told you sometimes things going to come when you're not going to be happy about it. But it's fit to hold. It got to be done so God people could be delivered so they could have their nation. They could have their land. Now, we're going to cut that down, cut this off. Now, I like you to I put the names over here. I like to give thanks to Joyce Cromwell and Robert Cromwell. They have been diligently here with us. Uh, to Miriam C. Fennell, Tracy Beard, Meshach Williams, Leon James, Miss Shirley Oliver, uh, Marvin Creek, and Adrian Herman. I'd like to give thanks to these individuals, along with the other ones that have always, the G family and some of the other ones, the uh, Miss Gordon, uh, and, and, oh, many, many, many families. I'm gonna, one day, I'm gonna try to get a whole board of names on here, and I'm gonna just go to name and name and name. But I thank you all. So be patient so I can have your names on the board at different times. And we thank you. Okay. And we'd like you to make the donations. Okay. We still need 12 more people. More people for the $500 to board the book in secret. Okay. I think I'm going to do a program. Uh, another uh, show on the air. We may do it later on on another channel. And it's going to be entitled Hidden Secrets. Okay. And it's only going to be, hopefully, it may be a 30-minute program. I'm gonna do probably one board at that time. But that's that's things of the future.
Lord. We need you to help out with the book. Also, make your donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jane Elaine North, Jacksonville, Florida. Also, Cross Rock Incorporated, because Louis Armstrong Ministry, I built Cross Rock Incorporated, so Louis Armstrong Ministry could come underneath Cross Rock Incorporated, and also the other ministry, like, like the one with Ms. Gowen, with the food ministry, the one that Minister uh, Corinthia have with the live uh, live program, and there's gonna be others as time go on. But we like that, so we the Cross Rock is actually the mama to it all, okay, or daddy, whatever you want to call it. And and we want other individuals as we build this channel. We want other individuals to get involved with this as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, you could do uh, Lewis Armstrong Ministry, 7536 Jane Elaine North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. And Cross Rock Incorporated, you could use that same address, 7536 Jane Elaine North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you could go to GiveLify with Cross Rock, go to GiveLify on your mobile app on the charitable and make your donation to Cross Rock Incorporated. And you also could go to PayPal, go to PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. And you can get on Cash App. Cash App at dollar sign SWAU1954. Cash App at dollar sign SWAU1954. And I ask you, please send your donations, though. We need to build this organization and we need your help, okay? And uh, you know, it's a constant thing. I need I need consistency in the donation. I need individuals who constantly send in what they can to help build this organization. Because we love you and we're trying to give you these truths. And we know ourselves that you ain't getting it nowhere else. Not this kind of stuff. Okay. Because this ministry is here by God. And you need to see that. And they're gonna be here for the long haul, all the way through. Okay, and this it ain't going nowhere, and you need to know that. So that's why I keep bringing it to you, the revelation after revelation after revelation, that you would know what God's plan for you is. And I say to you, thank you, my brothers and sisters, you guys, thank you, and have a beautiful day.